five. We can do it. We can do this. Okay. Okay. I'm Jen, and I'm the community manager for Cards Against Humanity. I'm Trin, and I'm the events manager for Cards Against Humanity. And, and it's, it's the, the morning. morning. Jen and Trin, in the morning, Jen and Trin have stuff to say. Good advice, in the morning, to fix your shit for the rest of the day. This week, we're reviewing a board game. Uh, the board game is called Slash, Romance Without Boundaries. It's a party card game by Glenn Given of Games by Playdate. He was nice enough to mail it to us, so we decided to play it and review it on camera. And sex is hilarious, and that's just a fact, so good job, Glenn, on picking that subject. In the spirit of the game, we put on sexy robes and spread rose petals and poured the wine and got to it. Uh -uh. To help play test this game, we enlisted our friends, Steven, Carlin, and Tomo. Everybody gets six cards, each one with a wide variety of characters from pop culture, history, and literature. The first player, or matchmaker, selects one character from their hand and places it face up on the table. Each player, in turn, selects a possible fuck buddy from their hand. The matchmaker chooses whomever they think is the best pairing. Play continues until some predetermined thing happens. I guess whether that's a point total agreed upon by the group or a certain number of rounds. Our first matchmaker today is Carlin. Mine is Job Blue. From Arrested Development, talentless magician will manipulate and lie his way to the middle. We all hand in our cards, and Carlin chooses from the wide variety of options we've given her. Cindy Walsh from Beverly Hills 90210, Hollywood mom from Minnesota, Chiron, said to be the first among centaurs and highly revered as a teacher and tutor, half pony, that's kind of going towards the top so far, Yogi Bear, um, picnic, picnic Basket, the big bear from Jellystone Park, also pretty damn good actually, uh, Zoe Washburn likes her gun and following the captain's orders, I love Zoe, but Joe does not deserve her. I'm going to yeah, go with Yogi Bear, yeah. actually, I oh, think nice. that their temperaments really kind of fit. Nice. Who was Yogi? Oh. Tomo wins, and he's the next matchmaker with Xena, Warrior Princess. Mm, man, I hope you feel this like I feel this. Tomo, I think we have a connection here. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so I'm trying to speculate. Would uh, Tomo like one that's funny or, like, makes more sense? It's hard to choose whether to play close to the character's actual canon or what the matchmaker will find hilarious. I don't know how you see Xena. After a bizarrely long deliberation, Tomo finally gets to choose. Goliath, stoic leader of the gargoyles. Mm. Oh. Coach oh, McGurk, soccer coach who doesn't have time for any kind of bullshit, owns swords and drinks a lot. He owns <laughs> swords, Tomo. Xander Harris, Muffy, comic relief, uh, relief friend, only member of the Scoop, uh, Scooby gang with zero powers. Uh, Chun Li, street fighter, female Chinese martial artist, super cop with uh, thighs of steel, kicks really, really fast. Man, I don't know. Suddenly, shit gets kinda intense. Does he think of Xena as heterosexual or not heterosexual? Exactly. Exactly. So that was my big question. Oh. So I actually kind of want to go through like all of my options. So I was like, oh, Zeus, that ties. No, she would never fucking have sex yeah. with Zeus. Stupid. Uh, Pam from Archer. I feel like they would have awesome sex. I have this character I've never heard of called Melisander from A Song of Fire and Ice. But her description was that she's a tricky fire witch who knows how to turn an honest but stubborn man into a tool of righteous anger. Gives birth to shadow assassins, you know, like you do. I ended up with Goliath because they were both kind of like loners and leaders. But it came down to these three. I love Coach Burke as a character because I think it's hilarious. He owns swords, Tomo. I know, I know, but I'm not gonna fit. I can't. Oh. Do can I make a case for Coach McGurk? Yeah. First of all, he's a take no shit motherfucker. He has got some experience from the battlefield of soccer. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, not happening. You're not very well. I'm gonna big Xander Harris. Yeah. I would be that fanfic for sure. Right. Sorry. Right. Oh my gosh. After a few more rounds. The group gets together their final thoughts on the game. What I'm noticing is that, like, to make this game like work, it's drawing from like really varied canons. But what kind of makes this game not work is that they're from really varied canons. It pretty much comes down to human or animal. Uh, and that's what I think. It's like, do I want a yeti to fuck Xena? Not so much. And after many conversations about yetis, wookies, and velociraptors fucking Xena warrior princess, we wrapped up the game for the night. Overall, we had a nice night with our friends. Uh, we just think the game could be improved with some tweaking. It does say within the game rules that if you don't know a character, you can swap out your cards between rounds. But if we had just a little more information about each of the characters, we wouldn't have to swap as much. 
And even if you're deeply familiar with the character, it'd be nice to have a refresher um, on maybe some interesting situations in this character's past or just what they're like. We do think the game could be improved if you were forced to tell stories about the character. We just wish there was one more step where you had to tell a story about them or just explain how they got together or what their first date was like. Right, I mean, even in one hour of playing, we only had one slash story come out at all. Uh, and that was just because I wanted to defend my pairing and not because it came up within the gameplay. But again, we had a really lovely night. Thanks, Glenn and Games by Playdate! We'll see you next week when we talk about computers. I'm Jen. And I'm Trin. It, it was the morning! <laughs>